Bauxite alumina sector continues to rebound. House approves bills to postpone local government elections. And public sector workers fined for flouting corruption prevention law. The Windalka Kirkvine Alumina Works plant in Manchester is set to restart operations in July this year. Hit hard by the effects of the global economic meltdown, the UC Rosal owned plant had suspended operations in 2009. Jamaica's Mining and Energy Minister James Robertson says the reopening of the plant will create some 1,000 high end jobs. He was making a statement to the House of Representatives on February 15. The total capacity of Kirkvine is approximately 600,000 tons of alumina per year. However, the plant is projected to produce about 252,000 tons of alumina for 2011. Robertson says the planned restart of operations at Kirkvine is subject to approval by international lenders. In 2009, three of the five bauxite alumina plants operating in Jamaica ceased operations as a result of the global recession. The fallout removed 42% of the capacity within the industry. 54.5% of the workers in the mining sector were laid off between 2008 and 2009. At the same time, export earnings had plunged from U.S. $1.4 billion in 2008 to U.S. $466 million in 2009. However, in recent times, the sector has started to experience steady recovery. Lawmakers on the government benches in the lower house on February 15 used their superior numbers to push through two bills, postponing local government polls until March 2012. Piloting the bills, junior minister with responsibility for local government, Robert Montague, says the elections are being deferred for three reasons. He says the administration needs more time to complete local government reform and to establish Portmore as the 15th parish of Jamaica. Montague also cited the effect that the elections would have on the National Population and Housing Census, which is scheduled to begin in April. However, the parliamentary opposition says the government was retreating, as it could not face Jamaicans at the polls at this time. Opposition spokesman on local government, Colin Fagan, says the administration is denying Jamaicans the opportunity to elect their local representatives. East Central St. Andrew MP Dr. Peter Phillips, who objected to the postponement of the polls, warned the political directorate against using local government institutions as political footballs. At the end of the debate, when House Speaker Delroy Chuck put the question to the members, a divide was called by the opposition. A subsequent vote resulted in government members prevailing with a majority. 28 public sector workers have been slapped with fines last year for failing to submit statutory declarations to the Corruption Prevention Commission by the stipulated deadline. For the period 2009-2010, the Commission is reporting that 42% of public servants have ignored the statutory requirements under law. In its annual report to Parliament, the Commission raised serious concerns about the small number of public sector workers who had been brought before the court for violating the law. During the year under review, the Director of Public Prosecutions, the DPP, hauled 51 public servants before the courts for infringing the law. Of this number, 28 have been fined for not submitting their statutory declarations on time, while the DPP withdrew charges against 23 alleged delinquents. In a swipe at the office of the DPP, the Commission signaled that it was dissatisfied with the number of matters thrown out by the DPP. The Commission says this frustrates the oversight body's efforts at reducing corruption. The Corruption Prevention Commission was established under the Corruption Prevention Act of 2000 and started operation in 2003. To date, the Commission reports that a little more than 18,000 persons have been referred to the DPP. Of this number, 512 have been acted on by the DPP. Meanwhile, the Commission is reporting that it has referred to the DPP three cases allegedly involving serious breaches of the Corruption Prevention Act. Another two cases have been sent to the appropriate service commissions for action. And the DPP has reportedly moved to take action against two public servants for the offense of illicit enrichment and other breaches of the Corruption Prevention Act. 
The controversial Southwest St. Catherine Member of Parliament, Everell Warmington, was stopped dead in his tracks by House Speaker Delroy Chuck on February 15 during a debate on two bills to postpone local government elections in Jamaica. Warmington had accused the Electoral Commission of Jamaica, the body with responsibility for electoral matters, of making recommendations that allegedly were in breach of the Municipal Act. Chuck ruled that the members' comments were irrelevant. Annoyed at the Speaker's remarks, Warmington insisted that he had a right to speak on behalf of his constituents in Parliament. Addressing the Speaker, Warmington said, You just crossed the line, Mr. Speaker. I am offended at your remarks. However, the House Speaker brushed aside the member's concern. The two bills were passed despite objections from the parliamentary opposition. That's it for this edition of the Parliament Report. Until the next bulletin, I'm Edmund Campbell. Walk good.